Hi, in today's video I am going to show you how you can use MQA5 to detect the engulfing pattern. So as you can see in the background, the expert advisor is currently running and every time it detects the engulfing pattern, either in the bullish or bearish variant, then it will place an arrow on the screen. First off, we have to talk about how the bullish and bearish version of the engulfing pattern look like. First off, both versions of the engulfing pattern always contain two candles. The first one is, in case of a bullish version, a bearish candle, followed by a bigger bullish candle that completely engulfs the previous bar. And depending on the type of engulfing pattern you look for, the second candle has to open with a slight gap. So as you can see here, the bearish bar closed right about here and the bullish bar opened lower. Same here, bullish bar and then we have a gap. But this depends on the type of engulfing pattern you are looking for. Some people also count bar combinations without gaps as an engulfing pattern, but that's up to you. For us, in order to identify an engulfing pattern in MQL5, we need the previous bar data. So as you can see here, I have just created a new expert advisor and now, now we are going to go ahead and create our own expert advisor that detects the engulfing pattern. So first off, as I've already mentioned, we need to access the previous bar data. To do so, we are going to create an array in the global space up here. And it's an array of type MQL rates. Let's just call it bar. And this array will hold the previous bar data. For us, especially important, the open and close of the previous bars. Inside the onInit function, we are going to set the array as a series. To do so, we are going to say array set as series. And this function takes our array as a parameter as well as the boolean true. And now inside the onTick function, we can call a function called copy rates. And this function basically takes the previous bar data and copies it into our bar array. First off, we have to pass the current symbol. Let's just say underscore symbol. The period, of course, the engulfing pattern can occur on different time frames. I'm just going to say period current, which is the current period or the current time frame. The starting position, let's say zero, starting with the current bar. And let's say we want to get the data for the past five bars, which is obviously more than enough to detect the engulfing pattern since we only need to get access to the previous two candles in order to check if they are an engulfing pattern. And we want to copy all the information into our bar array. Okay, so that's almost 50% of the work. Now we just need an if statement to check if we have either a bullish engulfing pattern or a bearish engulfing pattern. So let's check for a bullish one. First off, the first bar of the pattern, which is bar 2, or two bars ago, the open of this bar has to be greater than the close Of the same bar. So this basically means when the open is above the close, it means that we have a bearish candle, which is exactly what we have right here. So we are just checking is the open above the close. The next condition we have to check for is if the last bar, which is bar 1, dot 
open is smaller than the close of the previous bar. So this basically means the open of the previous or of the last bar, this one right here, the open is below the close of the bar before. We could also go ahead and say is smaller or equal. In this case, if there's no gap, it will still count as an engulfing pattern. But I'm going to remove the equal. I only want to detect engulfing patterns that include a gap. And the last condition we have to check for is the close of bar 1 above the open of bar 2. So this basically means it's the close of this bar above the open of this bar. If all three conditions we have checked for so far are true, then we have a bullish engulfing pattern. And it's very similar for the bearish one. We can just say the open of bar 2 is smaller than the close. So in other words, we are checking if the first candle is a bullish candle. Then the next condition is, is the open greater than the close. So is the open right here greater than the close. And again, you could also use the greater or equal sign if you want to detect engulfing patterns without a gap. And the last condition is bar 1 close smaller than the open of bar 2. If the close of this bar is below the open of the one before. So these are all the conditions we have. And now, um, as I've shown you at the beginning, at the beginning of the video, we are going to create some arrows on the screen. So to do so, I'm going to create a string that saves the current time. Let's just say time to string, time current. We can also compile, no errors so far. And let's just create an object, let's say object create. At the current chart, we want to create an a by arrow once we detect a bullish engulfing pattern, we have to give the object a unique name. So let's just say by arrow plus the current time. This way we will always have a unique name because the current time obviously always changes. We want to create an a by arrow, no sub window. And we want the arrow to, to be at the time of the last bar of the pattern. And at the high. And we can just go ahead, copy it, paste it here, create a cell arrow. and place the arrow at the low 
in case of a bearish engulfing pattern. And now we can compile it and test our expert advisor. So here you can see I'm inside the expert advisor right now. We have already placed two buy arrows. And of course you could also add some filters to improve the detection of engulfing patterns. For example, you could change the condition so that the gap needs to be wider. Or you could add a condition that checks that the close of the second candle isn't too far away from the first candle in order not to count breakout bars as an engulfing pattern. Or you could add an indicator as a filter, for example a moving average that will, also, that will only detect engulfing patterns that are in the direction of the moving average in order to filter out some bad trades. Okay, that's it for today. I hope you learned something new. If you did, feel free to leave a like. And if you are interested in developing your, your own trading robots, make sure to subscribe. And see you next time. Bye.